Dear y'all, this your boy King Eric the Great, aka Rick Capo, coming at y'all with another video. And my question to y'all is, why do y'all think that the Bobby Brown Bobby album didn't really pop off like it did, or like it should? Now the album went double platinum, which was good, considering. But we gotta look at it like this. In the 90s, everybody was buying records, and being that he went from seven times platinum to two times platinum, something had to hit a curve somewhere. And let me be the first to say that the Bobby album is cold. I like it. It had hit records like Humping Around, Get Away. It followed that New Jack Swing flavor. It had some great records on there. I still play that album to this day. But there was a lot of missteps with this release. And number one, for me observing, I felt that he took too long. Understanding the music game, if you've been gone for three to four years, that's like 40 years. Especially when the way competition was at that time in R&B. Because if you really look at 1992 when Bobby dropped that album, it was Tons of releases. 1992 was jam packed. I'm talking Jodeci, Mary J. Blige, TLC, SWV, Michael Jackson was killing it with Dangerous. You had Portrait, you had Jade, you had Silk, Brian McKnight, Boys the Men, Mariah, Prince came back with an album. R. Kelly was coming into his own with public announcement. Bobby had a, he got lost in the shuffle. He got lost in the shuffle because the new Jets sound was also heard on those albums as well. So ironically enough, Bobby Brown was put in the Ralph Tresvant position. If you really look in the movie, Ralph Tresvant was put in the position where he couldn't come out with a solo album because Bobby had dropped Don't Be Cruel, which was supposed to be the launching pad for Ralph when it comes to that new Jets sound. But... Bobby's album took off, and Ralph, he couldn't, he couldn't compete. So, it's just funny how it ricocheted on Bobby now, because he couldn't come out with a album that's going to explode like Don't Be Cruel in 1992, because the competition was stacked. And a lot of that New Jack sound was already heard on a doper scale on those other albums that I mentioned. What he should have done was he should have dropped in 1990. Because Don't Be Cruel had ran his course. He had a single out called Tapping My Heart, which he performed in 1990 at the MTV Awards with New Edition doing their solo acts. It was a dope song. It had great reception. But for some reason, the label didn't put it out. Like It just mysteriously vanished. Like You can look at him. He's performing the song. And it's dope. He should have dropped the album around 1990 or 91. That way it would be a perfect way to pretty much continue that momentum from Don't Be Cruel. But the fame had gotten to him. He had gotten distracted. Not only did he lost in the shuffle, but then he married Whitney Houston. And Whitney just basically took all his shine. He started becoming Mr. Whitney Houston now. That's what a lot of the media was labeling him as. Because if you really look at the transition of the first album, Bobby was the man. He was labeled as that dude. That alpha male energy, he was labeled as that. But then he got married, it's like Teddy Riley said at the Breakfast Club. The, per set, the persona kind of changed. Like People looked at him kind of funny like, yo... This dude married now. He can't be kicking all that hard, that fly stuff no more. And it doesn't help anymore that his wife is the biggest pop singer in the world. So, it kind of did damage to him being married to Whitney in a way. Because she overshadowed him. So now he was looking like, like I said before, he looked like the B-side. Because she made more money. She Her net worth was more more. His star was kind of dwindling at that time. 
even though he had the talent to hit records. Plus, he didn't really get involved and focus like he did on Don't Be Cool. That hunger was gone. And even though Bobby was a dope album, but considering all that I listed above, like the competition, him marrying Whitney, he took a little bit too long in releasing his album in a jam-packed year of 92 when New Jack Swing was taking his full swing. He got lost in the shuffle, and his career hasn't really recovered from that at all. So that's where he started, like, getting indul indulging with the drugs. And you can see that even in the Bobby Brown movie. But nevertheless, the Bobby album was one of the dopest overlooked releases in 92. It did great considering, because you know back in those times you could sell platinum by sneezing. But to his standards, going from seven times platinum to two times platinum was not, was not a great look. And he kind of dwindled from there. So that's my opinion on it. Like, if you, love, if you ain't heard that Bobby album, you need to check it out. It's dope. But it could have done better if it was released on time, if it had better marketing. And a lot of people might say if he and me, Whitney. So that's my opinion on that. Subscribe to the channel. This is King Eric the Great signing out. Holla back.